welcome back to Dundee Road. Today we are going to be building a kit from Kingsway Models that I have printed and downloaded from the internet. This is one of their free ones. And I'm also going to look at some of the things that I use while I'm modelling. So I'll get this cleared out of the way and then we'll get started. So first of all, let's look at the kit that we're going to build. This is one of their download and um, make up yourself kits and it's of a Wilkinson store. Now, I'm modelling in Scotland and Wilkinsons don't have many places in Scotland. So I will be uh, customising this kit to make it look a bit more um, in keeping. However, the building um, does actually look quite similar to a number of shops that, that I know of. I know of. Um, so I'm going to use this as a base and then work on um, making it a bit more prototypical. So first of all, the first thing that I've done is I have printed it onto normal printer paper. And I have also made a copy which is the opposite, so I have printed it the other way around. Once I've printed it, I have then mounted it onto grey board, which is one millimetre. I tend to just use one millimetre because multiples of that make up um, our, our standard um, 1 to 76 or 4 mil to the foot. So what I also have is I've also got a thickness gauge which is marked as 1 foot. So I know that that is how thick uh, 1 foot is and I can put it on top of things or I can move it next to things and I can work out. This is just created from scraps of, of the grey board. So as you can see, I have one copy which is the, the right way around, and I've got one copy which is the opposite way. The idea is that I'm actually gonna, this is a low relief kit, and I'm gonna make it semi low, low relief uh, by, by gluing them together. Now I'm going to make multiple copies of certain areas of this but I need the building um, to be built before I can start working out what areas I need to um, make stand out. So I'm I am going to be changing the sign so that's, that's one thing I'm going to do. I'm also going to be cutting um, this section in half so that it's not the full depth so it's not a square building, it's more of a rectangle. So what I'm going to do is I will set up a time lapse and I will start cutting this out.
So as you can see, I've now cut out um, a number of the pieces from the original um, sheets. I haven't cut everything out because I know I'm not going to use everything. Um, and I have cut down my wall for the side there. So as you can see, I've still got a copy of the original sheet. Now that's just to help me with um, remembering exactly what I had and what I've got. Um, I've got my windows out to the side here for the, the top. I've got my extra piece of, of wall if I need it. And I also know that I've got these, these extra bits if I need them. So the first thing is that this, this is quite thin. It is one millimeter card, but I want to build um, my base with the one mil card because I know that I'm going to add some bits which are going to make it thicker. So when I add the windows, that's going to make that bit thicker. But we also know that when we put the edges, we're, we're going to have a little bit which is uncovered. So I'll deal with that once we've, we've got the, the building together. And that, that does take a bit of time. So to make sure that we get things square, I'm going to use pieces of the, the scrap that we've got. Because this is going to take a bit of time to, to dry. So as, as we can see, we can then use these pieces to help us brace the corners. And of course, I know from the back what way it goes because of the windows in this one. I want to be careful where I add my bracing because I've still got stuff to add um, for details but in the, the below section. So I want the both braces to be just below the window level. One below the window level and one, one just above. So I've got enough space to put the roof in and then I've got um, enough space to put in a ceiling for the, the uh, shop below. So if I want to, I can add an interior or I can add lighting.
While we wait for that to dry, I want to look at um, some of the tools that I use. So I am printing things with my HP printer and I have been using um, compatible ink cartridges for a while. Um, my ink for my printer is quite expensive, so I bought these Kingsway, nothing to do with Kingsway's mod models. This is just another brand of, of ink. Um, my printer takes very high capacity cartridges, so um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to look at how fast the, the ink is. So everything I've, I've been putting together today has been printed using the 950 compatible cartridges and I do have a full set and an extra black of the genuine cartridges. Now these ones, um, the high capacity black says it will do 2,300 pages. That's out of 5%, so that's like a normal text document. So while we're doing things like um, modeling, we're gonna use a lot more ink than, than what is specified there. Um, these cartridges, I think, are around about 1,000 pages each uh, for the color ones. And it is individual, individual cartridges, so that should be about 1,000 of with the, the blue color. And then I also have, of course, the, the black. So once I put that in, I am going to run some tests with how fast the ink is. And to do that, um, I've already started the experiment with ones that have been printed um, with the compatible ink. And what I'm going to do is each week is I'm going to look at the difference between um, one that's been in sunlight, one that's just been on the shelf, and another which has been kept in a dark environment. So I have three other copies of this um, that are sitting um, in the different environments at the moment. And once I change from these cartridges on to the, the genuine cartridges, I'll change them all at the same time and I'll do the same. I'll print three copies and I'll, I'll put them into the, the different places. And then in a few weeks time, I'll come back and I'll show you the difference between each of the, the compatible cartridges. And then once I've done the uh, genuine cartridges, I'll do the same with that. As I say, these cartridges are very high capacity, so I don't know how long it's going to take before I actually need to change the cartridge. But once I do that, I will keep you up to date with that. So a while ago, I looked at this model and I thought, right, I'm going to I'm going to do this and I'm going to um, make it more how I want how I want it to look. So as you can see, I've got um, a couple of copies here printed out that um, have a rough diagram of what I'm going to do. And that's how I came up with the idea of having the corner. I thought with it having this sort of metalized section that it would fit being on a, a corner um, of a high street or, um, you know, a, a sort of secondary road where um, you've, you've got a bit more passing, so there'd be more chance of having people. And by doing that, I thought, well, if I make the, the door um, go diagonal so that you can go in from, from both streets, then I could have something on the other side of this street, which is um, also a sort of similar size of store. So I was thinking of some kind of electronics retailer or something like that that can go in here I could have something um, something similar across next to it. You may have seen the video uh, I got from a couple of years ago where I took the Metcalf kits and I put a spa shop underneath. And I think there's a post office there as well. This is a different sort of street to that. That would be more of a sort of tertiary street, one that's, that's just got a couple of shops randomly somewhere, whereas this looks like it would fit in where you've got a sort of parade of shops and, and a sort of main road. So I'm thinking about this being on a on a junction and sort of at an angle so that the, the road comes, comes at an angle out and then there's another shop there. So the viewing side is the, the opposite side of the main street and then you've got a, a tertiary street going up 
um, where there may be houses or there may be some kind of other um, convenience or another uh, service hidden behind it. Um, I do have in mind that this could be sort of a, an electronic shop, as I said, and it, it reminds me very much of, of a shop which was close to where I grew up. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna play about with this. Um, as I say, I'm building these models not for a specific location on my layout. I'm building them so that I've got a bank of models that I can put down and I can um, fit the the story of the area around the, the models um, that I'm I'm building, rather than having, you know the. The, the issues I see with um, having kits is that everything becomes, everything looks the same and I don't want things to look the same in my layout. I want them to look modern and appealing and as if it's been there for a long time and it's, it's grown naturally. As you can see, I've now glued together the building um, in the, the shape I was going for. So it now sits at around about a 45 degree angle. Um, it's not exactly 45 degrees uh, because I just arbitrarily chose a number of window bays to go along. I've also added in some um, serial board, uh, serial cardboard um, for the floors. This just gave, gave me some extra strength um, with, with the shape. Um, so this is as far as I'm going to take the kit with the actual instructions and now I'm going to start making it um, my own. Um, as you can see I do have a bit of glue marks on the edges here and the glue has discoloured a section here. Again that's something I'm going to look at with the, the inks and when I go back to the HP inks I'm going to do the same thing again and I'm going to see if we get the same result. This is just uh, clear PVA glue that I'm using for this one. So, as I say, this is as far as I'm going to take the actual kit. Um, we're going to now look at making this um, more realistic. So, the first thing that I'm, I'm looking at here that's going to make it more realistic will be um, potentially some drain pipes to cover these edges, but also um, printing off a section of, of this to wrap round to allow it to cover this, this gap. I also want to make this stand out and then we've also got a little um, sort of runner board along the top. Now that's also going to be on the inside and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that as the support for my roof. So. The roof will, will be a flat roof and it will be down just slightly. So what we're going to have to do first is we're going to have to take some measurements. We're going to have to measure out all of the, the space that we're, we're going to start um, building towards. So I've got a piece of the card which I've not used. Um, we may still use this bit of card, but it will be fine for writing down our measurements. So the first thing that we're, we're going to do, I'm going to leave the windows until last um, because those are um, I'm not sure if I'm going to make this, this building open yet or if this building is going to be, um, if I may use the actual windows that came with the building and I've got the full set for this side and I've got the full set for the other side as well. Um, I do want to make the, the door a diagonal door. I want the, the door to be at the angle. So, I know that that is um, 60. So I'm just, I'm just roughly going in and measuring. 
So as you can see, that is 60. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to do um, this, this section. Now to do this section, I'm going to use the one millimeter card and I'm going to go all the way around. So I'm going to go there, And there and I'm going to add the the extra so that is going to be 10 centimeters so um, so that'll be 200 millimeters um, so that's metal siding now as you remember we cut off the top flush and that was quite deliberate. So again, I'm going to get the, the piece that we didn't use. And I'm going to get my measurement. So that is, that is five. And you can see here that it's slightly dark at the top. I might do that um, slightly differently. So that is uh, 50. But of course, when we come down the other side, we're not going to come down as, as much. So I'm going to go back to this original here, and, and that is five. So that's 55, and then plus, we've also got the thickness of the cardboard. Now, I'm going to have a layer of card on top of, I'm going to have a layer of, a layer of card on top of this one. Then we're going to have that layer of card, then a layer of card for that. So, although we've measured 55 for the side, it's not actually 55. So, I'm going to do um, 60. And that will give me enough card to go all the way down the other side. And then I've got 200 so that I can wrap around. The next bit that I've got here is I've got the wooden top and again I'm going to need to make a couple of these. I'm going to need to make one for this side, one for there and then pretty much the whole length of the building. And again the easiest way to measure that is with the bit that's not been cut out. So we need um, so the top board is uh, 230 by one, because it is one millimeter. Uh, no, not one. Let's see what it is. I think it's, I think it's one, it's not, it's... Uh, three. Now, that is a very, very small measurement to be cutting out. Um, so it will be a thinner card. It's not going to be this one millimeter card. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut. Um, a number of these, so I'll probably need three of those. And that will give me enough to do this bit, this bit, and that bit with enough left over to do all of the rest. I've then got the window sills. And again, I'm going to do these, as I say, I'm doing these before I cut out the windows. Um, so my window sills. I think they are five millimeters. And I'm gonna make them 
15. And I need three, I need four of those. See, I've still got my four windows sitting here that I can use if I want to use them. So I'm going to start off with the, the metal siding. The top board and the window sills. The window sills are going to be made of the one millimeter. It doesn't look quite right, so let's try again. While doing stuff like this, there's, there's actually no rush. You don't need to rush doing any of this. Yep, I'm much happier with that one. Right, so. Because I don't know how square the edge of that is, um, what I've done is I've just created a straight line down from it and then I can start measuring from that. So each of my um, window sills And I can still keep going back to to my original. And because I've got a metal ruler, I can mark on my ruler exactly what I've measured as well. will just it will just wipe off so I intend to paint these in uh, in the same brown sort of color maybe a black color
So as you can see there, I've got my window sills. So I've done that. Now my top board is going to be different material, which I need to go and get. And my metal siding. Okay, so. Each part of the metal siding is 10. And it is 5. I don't have enough in this bit of card to do both. And What I will do is I will continue my lines straight across. So we'll do these small ones for the window sills first. So I'm going to leave them together like that. They are completely cut, but I'll leave them so that I can have something holding them together so I don't lose them while I cut this other component. Siding. And then this is also metal siding. Now this this bit should be able to do the inside of both. The inside of, of both sections.
And if you do make a mistake, um, sort of dry fitting does does help. So I had made that far far too long. As you can see, we've now we've now instated the the bit that sticks up, and we do have we do have a gap there, but we know we know we're going to have that gap, and we're going to fill that in um, by using the paper just to cover over it, and then the inside section. take off. We'll probably need to take off a little bit more of this inside section because it's going to be minus a couple of millimetres for the extra, for the extra bit of card going around the outside it's going to be minus, minus that so for it to sit flush against there and then with the other bit of card that's going to be on the other side. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to arbitrarily um, cut this in half. And we'll cut that down um, more once we actually get the other bit. So now we need so I'm trying to keep a set of windows intact. But this this card is not is not cheap, so I do need to be um, quite careful with how I use it and be efficient with it. So as I say, the, the scraps get turned into bracing. Um, I make the tools with scrap as well. And having having a foot measure like this is quite quite simple because we do have, in most cases, most rulers will be. Um, 12 inches so I know roughly that 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 width breaks down to that width So I've got my my back ends from metal siding. I need to go and get the cardboard to do the sill there, um, and that will be a painted finish, just like that. So now let's look at the sign. So again, the sign. I want it to be a different um, layer to the metal siding. I'm not sure yet whether I want it to stick out from the metal siding, be thicker, so be two millimetres, or if I want to perhaps use some of the packaging cardboard to bring out the one mil just that little bit proud of the metal siding, or if I want it to be in line with the metal siding. While I'm waiting on that drying, I thought I would look at um, how well glues stick. So, because we're we're doing layers, I thought it would be good to look at the the, the sticking power of glues. So, 
we've got the, the high-end brand here, which is the, the Pret Original. And then I've also got a cheap glue stick from a kit. Now this was um, very much sub one pound for this glue stick. It, it must have been about 15, 20 pence. Um, it came in a, a pack of glues. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna use them and I'm gonna see how well um, they stick. So I've got a bit of scrap paper, which was my test print from the siding. And all I'm going to do is cut a piece of paper out of this. Cut this in half. Cheap glue. Always remember to put the lid back on your glue stick. Now, I don't know if you can see already that the cheaper glue seemed to go on a lot better, a lot thinner than the prep. So again, just like the, the other glue, I'm gonna let this dry. I'm gonna see um, what the difference is when it comes to um, trying to peel it off. And I'm gonna, this this was put on the back and you can see the, there was glue at the edges, but it didn't glue. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if there's a difference between a cheap glue and an expensive one. So a few minutes later, we've now got um, our printed metal siding. And as you can see, I now have absolutely plenty to do what I need. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna cut out what we've got.
give myself plenty of room for the, the fold over and the folding edge. And then I've got another piece which I can use later if I need to, which should also still be enough to do everything I want it to do. Now, I could just stick this to the side and then stick the paper on top, but I don't want to do that. I want to make these look like they are the actual components. So, what I plan to do is glue together my shape. Do that. So there we go. That's that's my, my shape gluing together and then what I intend to do is to glue this and fold it round. So I'll give that a bit of time to dry and then I'll come back. It's been a bit of time since I set this out to dry and as you can see, I hope, there, there is a clear difference in the glues. So the Prit stick is definitely shiny whereas the area that the cheaper glue went is it looks like there's nothing there at all so let's try pulling it off and see what we got coverage wise so it actually peeled some of the gray board off as as it went so let's see what the print stick does so both seem just as strong as each other so I guess the only difference here is that any overspill with the cheaper one is going to be invisible. That's um, I was expecting the cheaper one to to um, be much easier to peel than that, but they, they both felt exactly the same. So that's interesting. So that that's for the, these two glues. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some other glues and just see exactly what what they're what they're like. So there we are, that's it now finished. I've added some finishing touches. I've put the roof on and as you can probably see there, the, the roof should look like uh, it's got the tar backed things on them. The roof metal just looks like it's been folded over and it's got ends on it. Um, I've now modeled it as a closed shop, um, as most shops are at the moment and I will do the interior for it um, as a module that slides in. Um, I think that's going to be the better way of, of doing this. Um, so at the moment all I've done is I've just printed off some shutters just so it looks um, complete. Hope you've enjoyed this little video. Um, it's taken a lot longer than I thought it would to make this one. Um, when I did the original um, this took maybe two hours um, to do start to finish and that was including adding some extra extra bracing in. Um, this has taken considerably longer, um, more so because I had to wait for a lot more things to dry and I had to make some stuff up on the fly so I had to make this and then I had to get the shutters and painting all of the, the various, various parts. It is worth it. I think spending the time and making the buildings your own is de definitely worth it. So on Thursday we'll have another train sim video and then next Sunday I will have another building. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. Um, I think I'll have the, the building for, for this side of, of this one. Um, as I say, I think this will be a street in the middle and then there will be another building um, off to... Off to off to this side at this angle um, and then back scene sort of area here um, but 
that's it for this one and I will see you on Thursday.